Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today's lesson again, grade 11 geography, and it will be based on massive igneous rocks. So let's not waste your airtime and data, rather more data than airtime, and let's get going regarding our lesson for today. All right, uh, today we're going to look at, as I said, massive igneous rocks. Uh, our main topic, and let me get my highlighter. And we'll be looking at identifying these landforms. We'll be looking at the characteristics and processes associated with the development of them. Okay, we're going to look at various things based on that. All right, now let's look at the important aspects at first. And I think one of the things we need to look at is the baseline knowledge. Now, many of us just jump into the section without the baseline knowledge, and it makes it uh, very difficult to understand at times, it makes it vague. So it's important to look. Now, if you refer to the YouTube lesson, my lesson on types of rocks, it gives you a detailed explanation of it. Now why? We need to know the rock type first, the igneous rocks, uh, before we go into the formation of it. It gives us a better understanding. But just as a little summary, uh, some of the main things, igneous rocks, no layers, all right, it's just a solid rock, all right, I mean, all rocks are solid, but this one doesn't have any layers. It's uniform resistance, it's the same hardness throughout it, all the same hardness. And it forms when magma and lava cools. So as the volcanic activity happens within the earth, the magma, which cools, forms the igneous rock, which is an intrusion. And then when it comes out, lava cools, it forms the igneous rocks. Okay, that's just a brief nutshell of what is going on there. All right. Now. First of all, we're going to look at intrusions because these intrusions will form the landforms eventually when they reach the surface of the earth. Okay, so our focus here, learners, intrusion means, um, let me get my, ah, there it's working. It means below the surface of the earth. That's the surface of the earth. It's below that, okay? And certain uh, intrusions or ignition, igneous intrusions will form, okay? Now, once again, we find various resource materials mentioned pluton or plutonic rock, okay? So we need to get a little idea of what is this pluton or plutonic rock. All right, so a pluton is a body of intrusive igneous rock. Intrusive means it's found within the surface, okay? And it's also called a plutonic rock. So the word pluton now should be clearer to you, all right? It's inside the surface of the earth, all right? And therefore it's known as a pluton, it's a body of rock can be side different sizes and it's found inside the surface of the earth. Now when we look at these igneous intrusions, we find magma is moving upwards towards the surface. Okay? And these features generally form in the crust. Okay? Now we look at this first one here, the batelet. All right? This is quite a huge feature. Okay, let me get my uh, pointer. All right, it's quite a huge feature here. All right, it's more or less domain shape, not always, but more or less. And it's large, in fact, it's the largest feature. All right, and of course, magma cools as it goes towards the Earth's surface and in the crust it cools and it forms this huge battlement. Okay, All right, an igneous, intrusion, a pluton or plutonic 
rock. All right. Then we get a saucer-shaped feature that cools the igneous rocks. And that will be a low bullet. I will go into detail on each one uh, after we just look at the description down here. And my reason for doing this is to show you all the features together. Then we get a dome-shaped feature. In fact, I should have made it more of a dome. All right, that's your lacolet. All right, it's smaller than this one, remember? may have similar shapes or whatever, but it's smaller. Then we get in between the bedding planes of the uh, sedimentary rocks. Magma may flow in and cool. And we get a horizontal feature known as a sill. All right. Known as a sill. And then we've got a feature which is at an angle, sometimes more or less vertical. Okay, and that's a dike. Ah, this resource has got the dike spelled wrong, eh? All right, but we will correct that as we go through. Okay, so these are the main features that we will look at. All right, sometimes we look at here, yeah, that's your pipe that's coming off with the volcanic activity that goes through, but we're going to look at these main features. Okay, now. Let's look at them. Now, what I want to make clear at the beginning is that we need to note that these are igneous intrusions, all right, that I spoke to you about the bat alert, the lack alert, the lope alert, all right, the soul, the dike, the intrusions they found within the earth. But I thought it'd be a nice idea to show you when these intrusions get exposed to the earth, uh, I felt that it may give you a better appreciation of how big or the shape they have. But I think we need to note that they are intrusions and may be exposed to the earth's surface as landforms shown by the pictures in the following slides. So I'm going to show you when these intrusions are exposed. Uh, it actually shows you better. And remember, as I always say, these sections are not difficult, but we need to visualize it. And by visualizing uh, these features and their formations and their size and their shapes, you understand, it makes understanding better. All right. And especially when you're going to get resources in your exams, okay, or your assessments, other assessments, you need to be able to identify. Remember, it's not just rote learning here. All right. You need to visualize it. You need to understand it and you need to apply it to questions. All right. So here we look at a battle that has been exposed. A beautiful sight. You can see how huge this <clears throat> intrusion is, all right, as it's exposed to the Earth's surface, okay? Now, they are large bodies of intrusive igneous rocks, okay? Remember, this now is exposed, eh? Right, and I use the word protonic rock. Okay, plutonic rock. All right, that's what it's called. Okay, they're large. In fact, they are the largest of the types of intrusions. Okay, they're the largest. Big. All right, they formed when magma cools beneath the Earth's surface. Again, we mentioned the word beneath intrusion. Okay, so magma cools. All right, now look at this. The backlit must be considered a backlit. It covers at least 100 square kilometers. Can you see the size? At least 100 square kilometers for it to be a backlit. All right. Backlits cover hundreds to thousands of square kilometers. Can you see the size? All right. It can go up to thousands of square kilometers. It can be massive. Okay. That is why it looks such a fantastic feature. Okay. Right, let's go on. We're going to look at a 
lack of it. All right. You can see the dome shape here. It's a smaller feature than a batelet. All right. So it's a dome shaped intrusion. Okay. All right. It's a dome shaped intrusion. It, it's less than 16 kilometers in diameter. Something interesting. All right. It's not as large as the batelet itself, covering hundreds, etc. Okay. It's composed of dense magma, which causes the overlying strata, that means the sedimentary rocks, to bend upwards on cooling. So, let's look at this. I've got the, let's create a nice color here for the sedimentary rocks. Let's create something here. Let me move my face a bit. Let's say, for instance, we have our sedimentary rocks in layers. All right, there's our layers of our sedimentary rocks. Now let's create a second sketch. The lava, or magma rather, starts to cool. And of course, condense, okay? And what does it do? It forces the sedimentary layers across it to bend. Can you see the layers bending? That's what it does. All right. Maybe I should be a bit more fancy here and take some red and make this red lava in this area. Now it's becoming black. All right. So what happens to the sedimentary rocks? It starts to bend upwards and this actually creates a domal shape. Okay. Right. That's your black alert. Okay, let's go to this one. This is a low bullet. All right, now let's look at this. We notice it's more saucer shaped. All right, it's bending downwards. When it's, you can see it clearly when it's exposed to the surface of the earth. So they are more or less saucer shaped intrusions. Okay, as you can see there on this little picture. And of course, they are known as low polets. Right. Now, what actually happens here? They are composed of dense magma, which causes strata, that's your sedimentary rocks, uh, below to form a depression. A depression means downwards, bending downwards when cooling. So, if I have this case, and let me do something fancy again, take my blue, and there's my layers, all right, of sedimentary rocks. And then what happens is, let's say the magma cools, and it cools, and there's my whole magma here, all right? And what happens now to the starter? Let me be fancy and make the starter red this time. Or what happens to the strata? It also starts to bend downwards. And therefore, we have our saucer shaped. Okay, so we're doing our brief descriptions of it. We've got an idea of a low polar. Right, then a dike. Now, in this case, it's a more or less vertical intrusion. All right, more or less vertical intrusion. All right, here, and I'm getting my little, I'm messing with my colors today. All right, yeah, magma intrudes in more or less vertical cracks of overlying, means the sedimentary rock above, rocks, and then it cools. So let's create something like this. All right, let's take my blue again. That's my sedimentary rocks. Okay, they are, they are here. All right, and here, okay, and there we have our sedimentary rocks and our sedimentary rocks and our sedimentary rocks. And what happens is there are cracks, all right, in between. So what would happen now? If I take this, what's going to happen here? The magma is going to flow through this, okay? 
and it, as it flows through, it's going to cool and create a dike, which is a more or less vertical uh, intrusion of igneous rocks. All right, can you see that happening? And that's how your dike forms. Okay. So, another beautiful feature. All right, you can see I love these features here. So, now you can see it, it's more or less a horizontal feature there. All right, it seems to have been built on the top, eh? the horizontal feature of this area. Okay, the so. Now, it's a horizontal intrusion. Okay. It's a layer of magma that intrudes between horizontal bedding planes found between sedimentary rock layers. And obviously, it cools. So, let's create a little story of this. I'm going to use another piece. All right. So, let's create our, our rocks. We have our sedimentary rocks in its layers, which is separated by bedding planes. As we discussed under types of rocks, it's the layer separating the different, or the plane separating the different layers of sedimentary rock. And what happens now is the magma goes between those bedding planes, all right? between those bedding planes. And what happens, it cools. And can you see the horizontal feature being formed? That intrusion is a cell. And yeah, it's beautiful when it's exposed. And when you do horizontal sedimentary rocks, you sometimes looked at your cap rocks. They are very resistant, resistant rock rather, and they could be your cells also. Can you see it? That cap rock, okay? Now, uh, in this actual igneous rocks, we will find that there will be various types of joints that will actually form in this igneous rocks due to various factors. I'm just going to deal with two fact or two joints rather. I'm dealing with the unloading joints. Now, what are they? They are joints formed near the surface during uplift and erosion. This is specifically to the igneous rocks. Now, I know there's some fancy words here, but we'll make sense of it. All right. The compressive stress or pressure is released, all right, resulting in joints. Let's make sense of this. Okay, so it's nearer to the surface. Okay, and we talk about erosion. Okay, uh, of, of the overlying rocks, etc. So let's create something. Okay, so let's say we have our layers of sedimentary rocks. Okay, and there we have our igneous rock. Okay, there's our igneous rock down here. I think I'm getting better as an artist now. Eh? Maybe I should do art as a as a career instead of being a geography teacher. Okay, so we have this. Now these layers are actually creating pressure on this rock and keeping it intact, okay? And keeping it intact, okay? In terms of limiting the amount of joints, etc. Now let's create something like this. Oh, I took the whole feature away. Um, I do apologize for that. I'll quickly do it again. All right, we have our layers and our layers and our layers and our layers, okay? And then we have our rocks. And I'm sorry, I'm wasting some of your airtime. Now, what happens as we start removing these layers and removing those layers? 
we have less layers that create pressure on this rock. So the pressure is released. Okay, and as the pressure is released, if you can look at my hands, the pressure is being released. Okay, what happens? From the top, the layers now, when the pressure is released, the rock now doesn't have the pressure on it and it starts to move in that way. Actually, it starts to crack because the pressure was keeping it down. Okay, now it starts to crack. Okay, I know my hands are ugly, but it's the best I can do there. It starts to crack. So as the pressure is released, there's cracks or joints start to form in this. This pressure was keeping it intact. That's what we talk about the compressive stress or the pressure is released. Okay. Another one here is your contractual joints. Okay. Now, here yeah, magma cools, contracts, and solidifies. This causes stress buildup that eventually exceeds the tensile strength. That means the maximum load that a material can support without fracturing. That means without cracking. So I'm going to move my face in here. All right, so we had this rock, okay, the magma cooling, and as it's cooling, it's contracting, it's contracting. And what happens, there's a certain maximum load that it can support before it fractures, so it, it contracts and then eventually it cracks when it reaches that maximum strength or tensile strength, and it cracks, forming cracks along the rock this is your contractual joints all right little fractures or joints along the rock that we see here okay these are two types of of, of joints that are formed there are others but these are the two main ones that we will discuss so we looked at uh, the different of igneous intrusions we looked at joints we looked at various things along that okay now Let's look at the landforms, okay? Remember all those pictures we're showing you above the surface of the earth, the intrusions are being exposed. And as I told you, they will form landforms when they be exposed to the surface. So there are various landforms, but we're gonna look at two of these landforms. One of them we're going to look at is the granite dome. Granite is an example of igneous rock, a very hard rock. Okay, so let's play around with it. It's, the granite is a the granite dome is a large dome shaped landform. Okay, <clears throat> now what actually happens here is I'm going to go through the explanation first, and I'm going to create a little visual explanation also okay the erosion of overlying rock layers brings the granite rock which example is a batelet to the earth's surface when i discussed the batelet you saw the picture of a large one there so it's an example it can be a batelet that comes through all right now what happens here pressure from the above uh, from above the granite rock decreases resulting in exfoliation that means sheets of rock peel off like an onion please in exams i don't want you right to, to tell me that a granite dome is an onion onion has layers okay and as you peel them off like that it's like this it peels off from a granite dome so let's make sense here of this explanation we said it's a large dome Right, shape landform. We can see this large dome shape landform here. Yeah? It's huge. All right. Now it says erosion of overlying rock layers bring the granite rock. Example battle it to the earth's surface. Now, if you look down here, learners, can you see the sedimentary layers? Okay, down here. Right. Now we say erosion of all this. Now look at this diagram. All those layers have been 
removed from here. Can you see it? And when they removed this large igneous intrusion, example of batelet, gets exposed to the surface. Can you see the dome shape here? General dome shape. All right? That's exposed to the surface. All right? Makes sense, learners? And then as it's exposed, remember, like this joints, the less pressure on it, now P rocks or layers of rock, or oh, not, I wouldn't use the word layer, I do apologize for that. Uh, parts of the rock now starts to peel off from the rock, known as exfoliation. Let me show you some pictures, okay? Look at this one, Linus, beautiful, all right? I could sit hours looking at this, okay? Hours, and it's free, no data. Maybe you have to pay an entrance fee, all right? But it's beautiful. It's large, dome-shaped, granite dome. And you notice that there are tourist attractions. Notice these guys. You understand? Hiking towards it, viewing it, etc. So it has economic significance, uh, brings in employment, all right, if you're looking at economic significance, lots of tourists, the country, foreign exchange, local tourists, various things, all right? Brings in more infrastructure, settlements, other industries, restaurants, whatever. But that comes under economic significance. Hey, let's stick to our geomorphology. I must not get carried away. Okay, can you see the beautiful? All right. Uh, look at this. Beautiful also, all right? can see this dome-shaped massive feature that sticks out. Can you see it? Massive feature that sticks out. A granite dome. And I have one little picture here showing you exfoliation. When the pressure is released, all the overlying layers, as I mentioned to you, have been eroded. Then the dome or the intrusion, the igneous intrusion has been exposed. And now because the pressure is released, uh, pieces or layers it forms, just peels off in layers actually, all right? That comes through. Can you see it down here, Lannis? Beautiful example of exfoliation that is happening. All right, so that's your granite dome. Now, let's look at the word, another feature known as Thor's. Not the one that you watch in those movies. That's the guy with the hammer. All right, he can also break rocks, but let's leave him from this at the moment. All right, <laughs> so let's look at this. Now I'm putting two sketches. Uh, one sketch should be enough to explain it, but I thought this is quite a nice one to show certain types of weathering, etc. So below the surface of the earth again, because it's an igneous intrusion, we say chemical weathering, all right? I'm going to come to this. I added it on. You don't need to know the word, but just to give you a better example. Effects jointed bedrock resulting, oh, sorry, I'm actually going through uh, the spheroidal weathering. Chemical weathering occurs along joints of the granite rock. Okay, so let's go first. Chemical weathering occurs along the joints of the granite rock, okay? Let me do this, All right? So chemical weathering occurs along the joints of the granite rock, we know that. Now, common one there is known as spheroidal weathering. Now we know chemical weathering deals with the liquid, okay? That goes through the water, that goes through the joints. So the igneous rock is jointed. Okay, so can you see, we also learned about how joints are created in igneous rocks. When we looked at it, uh, contractual joints and uh, unloading joints, etc. So we know about the joints, all right? So what happens if those are joints in there? Water gets in there, okay? And we talk about spheroidal weathering a form of chemical weathering where that affects the jointed bedrock resulting in the formation of more rounded rocks. So what happens here? There's the joints. Can you see it in the thaws? And the next process is when the water gets 
in those joints and it weathers those joints, right? Now, where's the best place of the weathering? You'll find an impact at the sides down here, okay? Where erosion occurs from three sides, okay? All around here. And it weathers this, making it more rounded. Remember, it's liquid. So it's going to make it more rounded. And that's why it's known as your sphroidal weathering. But learners, you don't need to know. Right, in terms of exam purposes. I just want to create some clarity. So you should know chemical weathering occurs along joints of granite rock, making it more rounded. Okay? Now, we had this process happening to this process where the rocks become more rounded. Eventually, erosion of the overlying rocks exposes it to the surface as a mound of rounded rocks. So what happens? All the overlying rocks, the sedimentary rocks and things lying on top, get eroded. Can you see that was the original surface? Now it's been removed. And as all the softer rock has been removed, then this uh, jointed igneous rocks that have been more rounded by weathering gets exposed to the surface, okay? And this is your thaws. This sketch also shows it, how it becomes rounded. And eventually all that gets eroded, it becomes exposed as a mound of rounded rocks. Okay, and that's your thaws. Okay, your thaws. Right, let's see a little sketch of this or picture. Can you see? It's more or less rounded when it's exposed. Look at this one, learners, beautiful, all right? Beautiful, all right? It gets exposed as a mound of more or less your rounded rocks, all right, because of chemical weight. You know, there's a beautiful aspect when I did some geology years back when I was younger, I did a course in geology. And sometimes when these rocks actually come out, okay, they have like a clayish color on it. Now, the beauty part of that is that while in the earth, a feldspar that's found in the rocks mixes with the water when weathering is happening and it forms clay. So the clay then clings to these rocks and when they're exposed, they have this clayish look because the clay is still around it and eventually wind erosion, etc., or, or, or wind, water, whatever, removes this clay texture around it. You don't need to know that uh, I need to stop now, I'm getting carried away, all right? But that also uh, is quite an interesting thing that sometimes you find this clayish color on it, but that's an additional information, all right? Now, of course, we need to look at some questions because that's what we're writing in the exams, learners. I always do that, put in some questions, some simple ones. Okay, it's about analyzing, All right? So this, I must note, has been adapted from a DBE past paper. Some of the questions have been changed, but the resource has been used. Okay, now let's look at this. It seems to be the same feature, eh? but why would an examiner do this? Both seems to be exposed, there's no key, yeah? And that is why I use this one, because sometimes you could get, uh, uh, examples like this and you must be able to handle it so there's no key oh my writing is also improving right with my even my highlighter all right so this is a situation beautiful question mark right so we have to then base our knowledge on this that we have in front of us so let's look at it he spoke about g spoke about h all right, both have been exposed. So both seems to be landforms, isn't it? That's another thing we can conclude now. Both are exposed to the surface, so it's landforms. All right, this seems to be domal shaped. All right, clearly, this seems to be a bit like little blocks or slightly rounded, but they loose blocks put together. Okay. So if I looked at it, 
I study two landforms, all right? So this domal shape should be my granite dome, and this should be my torus, okay? Can you see how we can work out? That's why even if you get something where it may not have as much information, that is why I adapted this, this little question, all right? You can still work things out. Not that you're gonna get questions where there's not gonna be keys or not clarity, but you can still work it out looking at these sketches. So that's my granite dome and that's my tall wall. I already information that I've studied, granite dome, how it forms, stores, how it forms, etc. Okay, so let's look at the questions. Identify landform G and H. Can you see? Examiners give you stuff. Sometimes they give you more information on your resources because that gives you little clues for the answers. So you get your tips on the resources in many occasions. Please, resource first, then questions. So I know G, Grado, H, Tors. Then it says name the rock type associated with these landforms. Of course, your answer to question one. And when if you did your study, you applied, whoa, they both are linked to igneous rocks. It just asks you for rock type. You understand? Of course, they are uh, igneous rocks, massive igneous rocks, yes, but the basic thing is your igneous rocks. All right. State a difference between landforms G and H. There will be various. The one that obvious one that comes to mind. Okay. Uh, one is actually a full dome shaped landform. And the other one is a mound of rounded rocks. That's a clear difference between the two. And learners, I advise you, uh, yes, there are many options. Don't get fancy in an exam. If it's asking you for a difference, go with the most obvious one, okay? It would ask you for more than add on. This is my recommendation. Of course, it still depends on you, but go with obvious ones that will definitely give you the marks. Okay, explain how these landforms are exposed to the surface of the earth. All right, you've learned already that it's an intrusion at first, okay, and then the lay overlying layers get eroded, and then this intrusion gets exposed as a landform, and that's explaining your stuff. So, I wonder. What is so difficult about geography? In fact, it's a beautiful understanding subject where you use a lot of visuals to create an understanding of it. You understand? I look forward to answering geography papers, especially when I get those metric papers after that. I love answering them. You understand? It's so interesting. Okay. Learners, I hope I've cleared clarity with regards to your massive igneous rocks. Uh, till our next lesson. All the best. Goodbye.